right on time. So it's, it's, you're continuing that note, right? But red is one note versus right and on are two notes. So you're slurring, right? So right on time. And then summer, same thing. It's, it's approximately from E4 to an F sharp. Sama yo omo. Again here. E nala. Hi, this is Coach Tomo from Honey Music School. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the song Right on Time by Tatsuro Yamashita. We're going to get right into it. So it was not only sung, but it was written and performed by Tatsuro Yamashita. It's one of his first top 10 hit singles, selling over half a million copies. And from that perspective, it became a turning point for Tatsuro. But also, this song literally started the J City Pops era. So it's regarded as a song that marked the dawn of the City Pops era. Um, obviously it was released in Japan, it was recorded in Guam in between CM shootings for what type of CM shooting? A commercial song for Stachy Maxwell's UD cassette tape. Uh, so this was in 1980, so 43 years ago as of 2023. Let's look at this, some of the key characteristics of this song and the way he sings. So number one, um, his sound is strong rounded, balanced, and open voice with some nasal escape. So he's got this very strong and steady controlled diaphragmatic support. Uh, he obviously has a very wide range of voice. His The highest note, which is sung in this song, A4, uh, he uses either chest or a very strong mixed voice. In the way he sings this song, he has a very elastic style entry and then he also uses some abrupt fall-offs. Um, he, he frequently uses slurs and slides, we'll, which we'll get into later. And there are some areas that he lets go at the end of the phrase. Uh, he, he obviously has strong and straight vowels. So this goes hand in hand with the first point, the rounded, balanced, and open voice, because you need a very strong and straight vowel sound in order to have that type of voice. Um, there are musical variations within the same vowel that he uses. Um, with all those tools, he uses less vibrato. There's not much noticeable vibrato that he's using. Sometimes at the end of a lingering or a longer phrase, but at the end. But again, subtle use of vibrato. Uh, he has very strong projection, obviously based on point number one, two, um, and four. So, this st his strong projection and it, the way he sings very much matches the lyrics and the feel or the drive of time and space, which is part of the um, theme of the song. So, when you're actually singing the song, you don't need to copy what he's doing, but what I'd like you to keep in mind is that you have you have very strong diaphragmatic support. And what that does is it creates that strong and steady, steady is more important, steady airflow from your diaphragm, right? From your inside. And I want you to ride, let your notes ride on your steady airstream. That's how you get your projection. Because this song has a very wide uh, range. Make sure you acknowledge where your brakes are so that you can work around that. I talked about the frequent use of slurs and slides and also letting go at some of the end of the phrases. So we can practice by repetition, which we'll do later again, uh, the slurs and the slides and the letting go. The straight and the strong and straight vowel sounds. So these are created based, based on mouth shapes right, to the vowel sounds. So let's be cognizant of the vowel sounds and how they change depending on the shape of your mouth 
or inside your mouth. That creates these vowel sounds. We talked about singing without vib vibrato or less characterization using vibrato, right? So obviously the song is gonna use the other expressions that we talked about, the slurs and the slides, openness of the voice and so forth. In terms of projection, um, what I always say is, you, you want to think about where your audience that you're singing to is. So let's for, for this exercise, let's say you're singing to an audience, be it 50 people, 100 people, 50 feet, or approximately 16 meters away. You need to get that projection in order to, for your song to travel to your audience. Let's look at the lyrics. You need to understand the lyrics and the content of the song before you can express the song. So on the left hand side, you have the Japanese. On the right hand side, what I've done is it is not a beautiful translation. It is a translation word for word or sentence for sentence or section for section. So the first part, Aoi Heisen on the left hand side, the blue horizon. Right? Runs through it now. So I've just translated each line and the segment of the lines. So it's not going to be a complete sentence. You need to sort of combine those two to try to get the meaning of the understanding of the meaning. Right? Togisuma sareta is sharpened. Toki no nagare kanjite. Feel the flow of time. Ah, toki meki eto. Ah, heartbeats. Ugoki das sekai wa world that starts to move. Wasere kakete ta. Almost forgotten. Toi yume no otozore. Far away dream appears. And here comes that's, um, that's section A. And then we're going to get into the course right, right away, right on time. Samayo omo inara. If it is a wandering feeling. Yasashiku ketomete. Gently, gently catch it. Sotto tsunde, softly cuddle it. Right on time. Hini, kokoro ni hi o tsukete. Put heart on fire. Afureru yorokobi ni abundant joy. Hirogare right on time. Let's spread it. Let's make it wide. Right on time. Okay? So, the blue horizon, it's, it's really um, something runs through the blue horizon now. And that sharpens the feeling of the flow of time and the heartbeats that starts the world to move. Move the almost forgotten faraway dream that appears. And the chorus, right on time, if it is a wandering feeling, gently catches, softly calls. So uh, I think the chorus sort of speaks to itself. All right. So, let's just go through the basics of Japanese pronunciation again. Singing right on time. Um, four points, right? A, each syllable must always, most always, ends with a vowel. B, each vowel has only one pronunciation, one way to pronounce it. I'm just going to go through the bottom, right? On the left-hand side of the chart, A, I, E, A, I, U, E, O, L. A, I, U, E, O. L we'll talk about it separately. So in Japanese the alphabet starts with a i u e o a i u e o and anytime you see on the right hand side I've put n in front of a a if I write it like n a or the n i y u the vowels always sound the same. Ah so a is a ah. i is e u is wu E is E and O is O. So if you put a consonant N in front of A, A is A, N is N, mm, same N mm sound, so Na. <clears throat> I is, so N I, I is E with the N sound, M. Mm. Ni. U, y U, the U sound is U. Y U is U. E's, M E sound, the E sound is E, put M in front of it, me. Same thing, do. Okay? Now, I'm going to talk about the L. Um, in Japanese, we do not have uh, the sound L nor the R sound. But what we do have is ra, 
Di Dudero, which is which which is close to an L sound, definitely not an R sound, closer to an L sound, but it also has the DT sound. D, d, d. And what, what's happening there is your tongue is is striking the upper palate of your mouth. D, d. So it's L and that sound. So la, d, combine those two. D, 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 d. So LU becomes U is U. Remember from that blue line there, U. So it's it's not LU. L is too light for the Japanese da di du sound. L is too light, LU, but it's not du either. Put those two together and you get du, du, du. Let's practice that. All right. So now we're going to get into the singing. All right. So we're going to sing up to there. Okay? So, right. It's a it's an F sharp 4. Right on time. Sama yo omo inala. Now, I've put down below, left hand down below, you can see the notage, right? The, uh, the notes. Uh, red stands for slides. Slides are pitch movement within one note. Compared to the blue, which is a slur, which is a, um, also a s s continuation of the note, but from one pitch to another pitch. Okay, so these are different notes versus the slide is is a change in pitch within one note. Uh, the green is, there's only one, right, in the uh, beginning of line two. Uh, this is the letting go. You sort of let go of the sound. <laughs> and we'll talk about that later. And that little wavy thing is uh, the prawl triller, right? It goes, ah, so you have one note. And you go up and you come down. That's a prawl triller. So I've noted the way to sing, right, based on the notations into the lyrics, right, with the color differentiation. So, right on time, right, right. So this is one note, right? If you can see it on the top, right, um, it's an F sharp but you're going to slide within that note. So it's really right, right. But we noted, we no, because we notate it as F sharp because that's the most important pitch, right? Right. So you want to get into the F sharp. Right. Okay. The next one, right on time. On is blue. So it's going to be slurred. So right, right. You slide it, you slide it up to from approximately an E to an F sharp. Right. From there, you're gonna um, slur down to B3. Right, right on time, right on time. So it's, it's, you're continuing that note, right? But red is one note versus right and on are two notes. So you're slurring, right? Right on time. And then sama. Same thing. It's it's approximately from E4 to an F sharp. Sama yo omo. Again here. Inala. So if I continue that, right? It's right on time. Sama yo omo inala. Let's try to put that on um, together with music. Right on time, sama yo omo inala. Okay? All right, so we'll move on. Inala, ya. Same again here. We're going to have that slide. Yasashiku uke tomete. So, Yasa, same slide. Shiku uke to. There's no slide on the tomete. But what you see the green. It's the only, only place which is green, which is letting go. Uke tomete. 
It's not uketomete. You don't let the sound continue, sort of abruptly end it, or you don't abruptly end it, but you sort of uh, subtly end it. Uketomete. Okay, so we're gonna sing. Um, we're gonna sing that section, right? Um, let's try it again. Okay, um, so I went beyond what we just talked about. So, subtle ending. And then, soto again is the slide. Soto tutum. So the blue is tutum tum. So, soto tutum. Those are on slur, right? And then the prawl triller. Soto tutum de. Okay, and then there's a slight vibrato if you want to use it on the tutum de. Slight. Um, um, sorry, <laughs> a slight vibrato there, okay, at the end. And then um, the pitch is going to go, Oh, all right, all right. Here, he, he doesn't slide, but once you sort of get to understand what he's doing in the song, if you want to sing on your own, then these slurs, slides, the letting go, the prawl trillers are all up to you. You just use where you think it'll give you that nice musical effect to convey your feeling. Okay? So, um, end of the second line. Oh, oh. Those are slurs, right? Oh. So it's F sharp, F sharp 4 to G4. All right. There's no slide on the ride here. All right on time. Again, there's that slur. Right on time. Again, the slide. Kokoro ni hi wo, kokoro ni hi wo tsukete. Right on time. Heart on fire. So put heart on fire. Right on time. Kokoro ni hi wo tsukete. There is no slide on the tsu either. So. Right on time. Kokoro ni hi wo tsukete. And then, again, the slide in red. Afureru yorokobi ni hirongare right on time. Okay? So, let's go through the song, right? Together. First together. Right? Right on time. Okay, now it's your turn to sing it the way we just went through, or you can sing it on your own. Yep, so here's the background music. All yours. Good luck. Okay, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, enjoy singing this song. Again, I told you you can sing it copying Tatsuro Yamashita or you can sing it on your own based on what you learned today and the way you've always sang, right? With all the tools that you already know. So, 
Enjoy. Happy life singing. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We are the music school which can learn songs in the Japanese language at the same time. All members are native Japanese teachers. We look forward to hearing from you. Bye bye.